Welcome back to The Vocalist. Today, we are listening to Van Halen. I did a little bit of research in advance when deciding what to hear first, and from what I read online, this particular song is the one to beat. So today, we are listening to Unchained, and it's gonna be audio only. Here we go. digging this. I, this is another, I've 1000% heard of Van Halen before, but this is another one of those bands. Um, what is that song? Hot for Teacher. I know I've heard that before. Um, but I, I definitely haven't heard this or if I have, it's one of those things where I, you know, it was on the background in the radio and I just didn't know what I was listening to. So I'm excited to just be zoning in on the audio today. I really love the build in here. So we're going to start back at the top. Here we go. love when bands um keep the same timing okay or time signature however you want to think of it um same beat but they make it feel different so if i'm let me go back to the beginning of this um in my head it, it could be different for you but i'm thinking you know actually i'll count i'll count along Like, um, you could almost imagine like a big four and then two and two or something like that. It's just got this huge, big, luscious measure and then it kind of shortens it a couple times. And again, we're keeping with the same timing. It's just the feel that it gives the piece and, you know, the groove that it, it gives the listener because this is, I don't know, this might be a weird thought, but it's kind of cool to think like, Whoever writes a song or creates a song or plays a song, you know, they're kind of able to control their listeners in that, um, with the, with the timing, you know, if I got to find a way to phrase this, whether you're jumping up and down in an arena or you're clapping along, any of that, the, the slightest shift in timing will stop someone from doing that. And I think it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool when, when a band keeps you on your toes and you don't know what to expect or you're caught by surprise and you aren't able to clap along or move the way you were previously because they switched it up. That maybe saying like control, I don't know. I was thinking marionette puppets and that seemed a little, I don't know, a little too controlling. So <laughs> in a good way, I mean, it's just the influence they have over the listener and the surprise that the, listener gets to experience. I like that. So 
Back to the beginning. We'll keep going. Already such an incredible mix and then the way he leads into a laugh it's very sinister and then ooh, actually that sort of mimic in the in the instruments I don't know if that was intentional but I like to think it was So much air, so much intensity. It's almost remarkable to me how well he's staying in tune because of just how much force is coming out of his body. Um, I love, he started with a glottal onset, onset um, which whenever you do that with any sort of vowel, it just immediately brings your chords together with a bit more press than if you were using an H or just a really gentle um, pronunciation. Let me play that again. Actually, I'm gonna go back. like the harmonies because the, I'm not getting that sort of, I don't know, you know, acapella, quartet, trio, sort of choir, beautiful harmony structure. It feels, I mean, obviously there's singing intervals that make sense here, but it's in a way that it feels a little bit more casual. And I don't know, it just, I think it suits the music really well. They're in tune. I... I, let me listen again. I need to find a way of, of expressing what I'm hearing. It might just be that uh, they're not, you know, being super crisp and precise with the onset and the cutoffs and everything. So it has this... It still feels very clean. It still feels, um, it still sounds great, but there, it just, I don't know. It's got this cool factor to it. Maybe just a little bit more relaxed. I don't know. I don't ask for permission. And, sorry, last thing. Compared to the intensity with which he's doing the solo line, it kind of makes sense that the other feels a little bit more laid back just because his diction is so crisp. He is emphasizing every single vowel, every single consonant. And so we're just getting this huge mouthful of really crisp, precise uh, diction. And so then when you've got the whole group coming in, in a way that just feels like, I don't know, adding sound, it's it seems a little bit more, um, it's just creating a different ambiance for me. Ain't nothing stays the same. Say, say, say.
to get into this transition again. Um, I think part of the reason why I am getting this more laid back vibe is we're hearing multiple voices on the same melodic line. And because their primary focus is not necessarily blending, we're getting to hear some of the distinct nuances and the different qualities to each individual voice, which is why it sounds, I don't want to put it, I don't want to say it negatively because I like the sound, but it doesn't have that really crisp sort of well-blended ensemble sound. It sounds like, cool, we've got added voices on these parts and we get to hear every little nook and cranny of every voice, which I like. I won't go back. Hopefully we'll have this repeated again, but I've talked previously about shadow vowels, how whenever you end with a specific consonant, sometimes it's good to add a little shadow vowel to it so that we can understand the word better. Um, like, well, title of the song, Unchained. You're not just saying chained. You're adding like an a uh sound at the end of the word. And as I was listening, sort of the rock version of that, sometimes we get this, uh, this sort of sigh, this sort of um, breath at the end. So Again, it helps to emphasize the word that's being said, but it's just a different technique, really, a different um, a different way of pulling that out so that it still matches the style and the genre, which hopefully it'll happen again. If it does, I'll, I'll point it out. You know what? That was a great... So when he said Unchained... We did get that little sh shadow vowel, but then when he said run in, uh, we had a bit more of that sort of fry, breathy sound. Let me play that again. You can really hear, um, he doesn't seem to use a ton of forward placement or a ton of nasal resonance. And the reason I think that is when he just ascended on that last phrase, I feel like we got so much more open backspace to create the sound as opposed to him pulling it forward. Let me hear that again. When he just says nothing stays the same, it's still, it feels very full, but it feels um, like a lot of it is, you know, oral cavity space, pharyngeal space. We're not getting a ton of forward placement. Yeah, yeah, hit the ground running, change. And nothing stays the same. Stays the same. Like he's, he, yeah, I feel like he's getting a lot more space from the throat as opposed to stays the same, like pulling it forward. It's very... I don't know, it's a very cool sound and very distinct, I think, for this, um, for this style of music.
I love that I got to hear him speak in that because his speaking voice matches that singing sound to perfection. And like I'm, he wasn't pulling a lot too far forward, which that's helpful when you're doing a lot more mix, a lot more of that scream. But when you're in a comfortable place in your range and you don't need to, to just create that nice full sound. He was just doing a lot of open throat singing, as we might say, you know, open pharyngeal space and um, really utilizing the space in his mouth to create that big full sound. And yeah, it matches the speaking voice so well. Um, I am probably going to go look at some sheet music after this because I want to I want to take a look at the timing and see like what sort of changes um, did or did not occur throughout the song. Sometimes it's, um, you have to, for me anyway, I have to listen back a few times to determine, okay, is there really like a meter change or is this just, they're tricking me <laughs> with syncopation or however they've sort of arranged the notes. So my big takeaway from this, I just really loved the timing, uh, which is why I want to, look into it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, we'll, we'll definitely be revisiting more of Van Halen. If you guys have suggestions, uh, please let me know. Like I said, I did some research to see, ooh, what should I hear first? And this one popped up multiple times, multiple articles, different um, like fan, I don't know if they were Reddits or where I saw it, but a lot of commentary um, from the people who know our music best. So let me know what I should hear next. Thank you guys so much for listening with me and hopefully I will see you next time.